Welcome to the CS Roundup with Russell and Jan. I'm Russell. And I'm Jan. How you doing right. today, Russell? I'm good. I'm good. I hope everybody out there is doing good too. Today, our topic is going to be, we're going to try to untangle this mismatch of net promoter score, customer satisfaction score, customer engagement score, and product market fit. Uh, customer effort score. Customer effort score. Aha. Yeah. So, so the acronyms now, are not universal. We have we have two versions of CES then. All right. Fun. All right. I'm not going to add one more to the ticker, but <laughs> I guess we have a, a five part series here. So I guess maybe I'll start by just laying out. Wait, Russell says NPS, CSAT, CES, CES, product market fit. <laughs> yeah, there we Love. go. Five parts. So I, I, I'm not going to watch, uh, make everybody watch me struggle through changing our ticker, but um, maybe we'll just start off by sort of talking about why we chose this topic in the first place. Are there, you know, customer success leaders out there who are trying to figure out which one of these metrics might mean the most to your program or how do you approach this? Well, I guess part of why I wanted to talk about this topic is I hate MPS. Mm -hmm. I really do. I just, I find it to be useless for customer success, for B2B uh, businesses generally, because, because it, it isn't a question that's relevant, right? It's a question that was created for B2C so that if you're purchasing a product, the most influential you know, uh, in, in way that, you know, they can um, make a product viral is, is if one person is suggesting it to a friend or a family member or anybody like if it's all a, an, or an influencer, right? Like that's why they spend so much money on influencers, you know, when they're doing advertising, because when, when a person recommends a product and so they're asking, would you recommend this to someone else? That's all they're asking. And that's what you should ask. If you're B2C and you have a product that you're selling, what has that got to do with B2B customer success? Because it, it, it's, not, it's not what you really need to know. It's not what you need to know at the end of onboarding. It's not what you need to know at the end of you know, a support ticket, which is why then they use CSAT, you know, are, are you satisfied? But that, that's the whole point of a survey is to ask a relevant question. And I just find NPS to be irrelevant. I fully agree. And I think that sentiment is widespread and it's everywhere, except at the investor level and maybe the CEO level, right? And maybe that's because they have to answer to the investors. So if you are a CEO or an investor and you're listening to this, please stop using NPS. <laughs> uh, listen to the rest of your business and you'll have a healthier business for it. Well, and that's just to add a little bit more to it. Literally, when I talk to CS leaders about this, they all say, oh, well, if I get a nine or a 10, then I know they think something positive. So I'll go and find out what do they actually think? It's like, OK, so shouldn't a survey tell you that? Oh, no, it doesn't. So you have to go and ask them. And if they get a detractor score, then they say, oh, I want to know what does the, the you know, what do they actually think? So again, the detractor score also doesn't tell you anything. It just tells you I should go and talk to them. Or if people think this is irrelevant and I don't answer it, then you have a big block of those folks that don't answer it. And that tells you nothing. It might be that they're completely not engaged. It might be just they don't care about you enough to even respond. You don't know which because you haven't asked the correct question. Anyway, so I'll, I'll stop harping on that. <laughs> All right, fair enough. I think we agree here. So that leaves us with these other four components maybe yeah. that someone might lean on to figure out what is the sentiment and what is the pulse of their customer base. Uh, so CSAT, you kind of foreshadowed this, but I think of CSAT as basically almost like a, a one to two question survey. And the one question for sure is, how are you satisfied right now? I think the key is you ask this at the end of a touch point, and if you just ask one question, how satisfied are you with us right now? 
what you're really asking is how satisfied are you with the touch point that you just went through? And so you can get good information out of that single question survey about whether your onboarding process is effective, your ticketing system, your EBRs, and so forth. I think this cool second question to add on to that, which could be a free form answer is, why did you answer what you answered? And that's where you give people the opportunity to expand a little bit and you can learn better from it. Well, with any of these, besides doing the number, you always give them that text box with the text box where they can add in something, right? But what I don't love about CSET, and it's not that I don't like surveys, I do, but what I don't love about CSET is it's a little bit nebulous because what are you satisfied with? Are you satisfied with the solution or are you satisfied with your service level? Mm -hmm. And you don't really know. And oftentimes support teams are measured by the CSAT numbers, except that they don't have control over if the person's going to like the solution or not, because that has to do with the product and whatever they work out with engineering or other factors, you know. I can't count how many times I have not given feedback because I was afraid it would reflect badly on a person that I felt good about, but that the feedback would have been about the product. Right. And so, so that's the thing is, is it does, again, we have another survey that isn't the question that you really want to ask. You really want to ask two questions. You want to ask, are you satisfied with the solution? And then you also want to ask, are you satisfied with my service level? And you can ask it as satisfied or you can ask it as something else. How would you rate it? You know, maybe satisfied is a, you would ask about the solution. And then I guess otherwise you can rate the service level. Right. And, you know, give somebody a you know one through five you know rating for that. Um, that's probably the better way to go. It's sometimes hard to get somebody to answer two questions. I do think that there's some surveys out there that have it built into the email or built into the exchange where you make it easier on folks. And, and I, I kind of prefer, I prefer that. I think also timing can have an impact, but I just think that the way that CSAT is used, it's confusing. And so again, not my favorite. I don't hate it as much as NPS, but I'd like it to be more specific. Yeah, it's. It, I'm thinking as you're talking about solution versus service, that's customer outcome versus customer experience in a way, right? So you can yeah. you can yeah. get that both of those angles. Yeah, exactly. This has been so lively. I'm afraid to say that we're running out of time, and I think we might need to dig into the two CES. No, no, we, we can. No, we can do this. We can do this. Let's just go through it quickly. Okay. Come on. All right. So okay. NPS and CSAT to me are about asking for customer feedback. Customer engagement score and customer effort score to me are things that you might calculate internally without customer feedback. Do you agree with that? No, I don't. Okay, because tell me how you think that you would arrive at those. All right, so customer effort score, that is when you ask the customer, how much effort did you have to put into this activity? It would, and this is their perception of the effort involved. You can ask that at the end of an onboarding process. You can ask that when they're reaching out to support or like to your knowledge management system. You know, they're working with your chat, trying to get information there. And um, or you can ask that at the end of your session with the um, with your support team. Right how much effort was involved. And those are good questions to ask when you suspect that you're putting your customer through a bad experience, when they're having to you know, lift a bit too much on their side of, of, the, of the effort. And so that's what I like about customer effort score is that when you want to make improvements, you can really find out if you are making those improvements or what to, what to focus on, what what area to attack. Um, that's that's what I really love about CES customer effort score. Customer do you, yeah. Do you want to talk about engagement score? Well, I mean, I I my experience with that is actually that that's something <laughs> that that's something that you actually um, do a, as a score internally, right? So that's how I usually think of customer engagement. Have you? I've never seen that as part of a survey. Have you? No, and I th I think that some people are trying to figure out how to calculate that internally. 
I think there's a fine line between that and adoption, right? Wow. Yeah. So, but it's not just product adoption. It's how engaged are they? How willing are they to pick up the phone? Do they attend community events, things like that? Like how, how engaged are they? Yeah. And I guess I think of that as like what all of those AI and, and ML solutions out there around customer intelligence are really solving for. And I think that they probably do a better job at it than, you know, what we were trying to do by, you know, manually before, which was the customer effort engagement score. Sure. Yeah. So, and then let's quickly touch on on product market fit. Yeah. So it's it seems like if I'm sensing the direction that you're thinking, you might ask a customer whether they feel like they're the ideal target or whether the whether your solution is really helping them with their core needs. Right. And a really easy way to do it is you just quickly ask them like, is is this product a must have? Like, you know, rate this as a must have on a must have scale. And, uh, you know, 10 is must have and zero is, you know, don't, don't like it somewhere in the middle is, you know, nice to have. And, and then you, you get a really good idea just from that one question. And then you can also do the text box, right? But otherwise there's a product market fit survey that goes through like uh, what I've mostly seen is like five different questions that, you know, and really at this point, we would just suggest people Google them because I don't think we can go through all five. But um, but I think you do this to uh, at certain times to really get the temperature of your customer base. And this one is actually really helpful for investors, right? If, if you're hitting the product market fit and you can show with your survey results that you've got really enthusiastic customers, that's what your investors should really care about. So, I don't know. I just wish investors would stop caring about NPS. Nothing but vanity, NPS. Yes, exactly. All right. Well, I think that's our time for the day. I hope this helped everybody demystify what these what these five things are and how they can help guide your business. Turns out only four of them can help you guide your business. <laughs> eh, maybe all of them. <laughs> well, all no. Right. Not MPS, you're right. Only four. <laughs> and if we have any B2C listeners, maybe oh. NPS is okay. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, this has been a good one. I think we will see everybody next time. Yeah. See you next time.